Okay, so the first thing that I don't understand about K-pop stands is when they say that 4th generation is famous. I was watching a K-pop short somewhere in 2022 which led me to make a debunking video and the short was fastest girl group 4th generation MVs to reach 100 million views and there were two comments talking about how it's easier for 4th generation to get views and stuff like that and one of those two comments were like you know 3rd generation helped the 4th generation and it made me so mad that you know I made a debunking video called 4th generation isn't four generation is famous because no good smaller companies don't exist and also i saw a k-pop short recently two or three days ago on unpopular k-pop opinions and one of the opinions also talked about how four generation is famous now this makes me so annoyed when k-pop stands say that the four generation is famous and you know it's easier for groups to get views yes the third generation did help the four generation but the thing is they only have they didn't really help much of the four generations since there are a lot of groups that debuted in the four generations since it's since it start in 2018 all the way up to now currently the four generation there have been so many groups to debut but only like you know bigger budgeted ones who grab the attention of k-pop stands a lot have gotten popular or groups from the big three plus hype and you all only looked at about eight to ten groups and then you'll assume that the fourth generation is famous and it's easier for groups to get views stop only looking at bigger budgeted groups and stop only looking at a small couple of bigger budgeted groups and then saying that you know the fourth generation is famous and the fourth generation is not only made up of bigger groups like the seraphim i have new jeans itsy stray kids atis g idol etc groups like makka makka 50 50 limelight busy boys a week cici trusty um on air and all sorts of these underrated unpopular and no-go groups exist too stop trying to be like the fourth generation is famous when it's actually not famous and only like eight to ten or maybe three or four more groups are actually popular and fourth generation is actually not a famous generation because if it was a famous generation then why haven't makkah makka have high views for their music like you know 30 million to 40 million views because you say it's easier for groups to get views their debut song is 100k plus views the comeback song is 200k plus views or 300k plus views and the third comeback is their first song to reach 1 million views if the fourth generation is famous why haven't neon punches 1 million viewed mv passed and reached 30 million and the comeback song which is like 200k passed and reached like you know the uh 30 million or 40 million why haven't fainted song which is 100k plus views reached um you know of uh, 30 million 40 million why haven't all these groups who are below uh, 100k or above 100k or groups that have actually reached 1 million why haven't they passed 30 million views or 40 million views or even reached 100 million views you all say it's easier for groups to get views in the fourth generation and you'll say third generation help which i agree that third generation help but it's not easier for groups to get views in the fourth generation it's if it was easier than every group to debut in the fourth generation or almost all groups would be getting views and stuff if it's easier for groups to get views then why haven't these nugu or unpopular underrated groups smaller company ones and bigger company ones and better budgeted company ones have gotten views why haven't they gotten views it's because the fourth generation isn't famous and y'all are just dumb for saying that because you looked at eight to ten Popular groups and you'll assume that the, it's easier for the four generations to get views. Eight to ten popular groups don't make up the four generation. There are about close to a thousand groups that debuted in 2021 and 2022 for girl groups. Close to 50 plus girl groups debuted in K-pop alone, leaving out the other genres of Korean music. And in 2021, 2022, close to 25 plus boy groups debuted in 2021, 2022, leaving out other genres of Korean music and only looking at K-pop. Don't say that, you know. Um, the fourth generation is famous, but K-pop stands mostly checked out bigger budgeted debuts in 2021. For example, K-pop stands mostly checked out I've, Billy, um, who else? Pixie, for example. And very few K-pop stands actually checked out the underrated debuts. And even rare, few K-pop stands actually checked out the, you know, super underrated no-good debuts. And when you look at K-pop stands trying to rank all the debuts of, you know, a year, there will be one K-tuber doing hardcore research and checking out finding the most underrated groups like I do and but there will also be K-tubers who will just you know look at K-pop wiki or something and look at you know only the notable debuts that are listed on websites and stuff that they can add in the video and stuff and they don't do super hardcore research so you cannot say that fourth generation is famous because if fourth generation is famous then K-pop stands would know a lot more groups than just bigger budgeted groups or well-known groups or popular groups in the fourth generation you all need to stop saying fourth generation is famous when it's not the next thing that I don't understand about K-pop stands is when they do ranking videos, be it monthly ranking or whatever type of ranking, where they're basically ranking songs. And then they go like, you know, um, this is their weakest title track or this is, you know, not their best title track, but then they put it in the top 10 list or something like that. Like I watched a K-tuber do monthly 
rankings for February and they put Elast in the top 10 I believe so I don't remember and they said that this is their weakest title track or something the song Thrill that Elast had released in February now it made me really weird like basically when you do ranking videos you rank them or you rank the songs based on how you like them your personal taste so saying that um the song is the weakest title track but also putting it in the top 10 is kind of weird i understand if it's a personal preference or something that you know even if the song is not as good even if it's a group's weakest title track you still love it and you still you know find it amazing like for me i like um red velvet queendom despite it um you know being not liked by a lot of k-pop stars because they call it underwhelming and stuff like that but the thing is i don't understand why do k-pop stands say that this is the weakest title track and put it in the top 10 is it because of personal preference because you know you do ranking videos and you rank the songs based on how you like them and your taste and if it fits your taste so i don't understand if it's personal preference that they put it in the top 10 because then it's fine if you're ranking a song that is not objectively good that has weird auto tune or maybe it's produced badly or something but you still like it enough to put it in the top 10 i do that with a lot of songs because I like them. Even if the song is not objectively amazing or produced well, I will still put it in the top 10 if it fits my taste. Or if it's like even boring, also I'll put it in the top 10 if it fits my taste. But I don't know if these K-pop stands are putting it in the top 10 just like that. Or are, do they actually like it even if it's not the best title track of the group? It just confuses me and I don't understand it about K-pop stands. Why they add songs in the top 10 even when they write this is not their best title track or this is their weakest title track or whatever. Okay, so the next thing that I don't understand about K-pop stands is that they refuse to believe that BTS are the reason for the success of TXT, New Jeans, Le Seraphim, etc. Now, there are some K-pop stands out there who believe that TXT, New Jeans and Le Seraphim probably got success on their own and BTS didn't help them. And if you watch my recent reacting to dumb and disagreeable opinions that I found on unpopular K-pop opinions videos and shorts, there was an opinion a person made about new jeans and how BTS didn't help them get successful and you know, you need to stop bringing up groups, you need to stop talking about BTS and bringing up other high groups and stuff and they were talking about how new jeans' music is good, they have an unskippable discography and BTS didn't help them get successful or something like that. But the thing is, BTS were an underrated group when they debuted and you know even though they weren't extremely noble and they got like one two awards and stuff they were still you know quite underrated and not popular yet and you know BTS were going to disband because of the fact that the company was going bankrupt but like all of a sudden BTS ended up getting more popularity and then they further got the worldwide popularity and because hype got the worldwide popularity for BTS that was the reason New Jeans, I have listened. New Jeans, Le Seraphim, and TXT, sorry, not I, debuted and got to debut. If BTS disbanded and hype shut down, then New Jeans, TXT, and Le Seraphim wouldn't have debuted. And even if you look at these three groups, they probably got more fans later on because of the hard work and music and stuff but in the starting of the debuts it was all thanks to bts that they got to debut and they got their popularity because of the fact that you know bts helped the company grow bigger if you look at new jeans if new jeans didn't debut in hype and if they debuted in another company with the same exact you know y2k concept and stuff like that people wouldn't have called them refreshing or anything because of the fact that you know they debuted under a company that is not hype a lot of people are noticing them and calling them refreshing because of the fact that they're under such a big company if they debuted under any other company my guarantee is that people wouldn't be like you know the music is refreshing the music is this the music is that because there would have been some underrated group or something not getting much popularity since they didn't debut under hype and you know people wouldn't be saying that you know oh the music is noiseless amongst the noise or oh, this or oh, that or oh, the music is refreshing so you all need to stop saying that bts didn't help the group's popularity when in fact bts are the reason the company grew bigger and these groups debuted if any of these three groups debuted under another company that wasn't hype they wouldn't have gotten much popularity or anything they'd have to work hard just like any other group that's underrated and they would have to you know work extremely hard so stop trying to say that BTS didn't help these groups get successful when BTS are the reason these groups debuted in the first place and um, they are the reason why these groups exist and if BTS were unsuccessful and remained unsuccessful, HYBE would have shut down and the Seraphim, New Jeans, TXT and Trainee A which I think disbanded and the other group and team wouldn't have you know 
been there in K-pop and they wouldn't have existed and the world would have been so much different in K-pop because hype wouldn't have existed even further to create these groups. So stop believing that BTS didn't help these groups when they are the reason the company grew bigger. Okay, so the next thing that I don't understand about K-pop stands is K-tubers and K-pop short channels, how they can so easily, you know, spread misinformation on K-tube and, you know, say things and stuff like... Whenever KTubers make unpopular K-pop opinions videos, they're always talking about boy groups and they're always talking about negatively and they're always negatively talking about 4gen boy groups. I mean, whenever they make a boy group opinion for boy groups as a whole in the 4gen, it's always negative opinions like boy groups suck, boy groups are never good, boy groups release dark and noise music, um, girl groups are better than boy groups, girl groups carry K-pop, boy groups this, boy groups need to step up their music, this, that, this, that, just because they looked at, you know, three or four boy groups in the 4th generation that release dark and noise music and they looked at the title tracks of these boy groups they assume that every boy group in the fourth generation is releasing this sound while girl groups are being diverse boy groups are doing one sort of sound and stuff and it's so annoying to see this like if ktubers got out of the bubble of checking out bigger budgeted and popular boy groups and actually dug deep into different boy groups from bigger companies and smaller companies that are underrated no one one popular they will see how much diversity there actually is in the fourth generation since it's since it's supposed it start in 2018 and even if they look at you know popular well-known bigger budgeted boy group b-sides and other songs of theirs they will see how much actual good music these boy groups actually have there are so many amazing boy group songs but yet k-pop stands refuse to believe that boy groups are actually good and they want to believe that boy groups release one type of sound just so they can complain constantly on the internet even for k-pop stands who go like fourth generation is noise and it's funny that they say fourth generation is noise when fourth generation is not only made up of bigger groups every generation has smaller company groups that are no go underrated and popular and don't get stands and stuff and not everyone in the fourth generation is releasing a noise song and it's so annoying how you say fourth generation is noise constantly complain about it and then you know hail new jeans as some saviors just because they're releasing noiseless music when i've done my research on different you know musics in the fourth generation and found out that there's actually more noiseless music in the fourth generation than there is noise i looked at a couple of groups four or five or six or seven or close to 10 or 15 groups you looked at and then you'll assume everyone is doing noise music when there's so many groups that debut so many groups that release albums with their comebacks and so much diversity in the albums k-pop companies are not going to only release one sort of sound for each comeback one sort of sound for each b-side and not every single group is going to release one sort of sound so how can you say that fourth generation is noise when there's so much of different diverse b-sides and stuff and not everyone is going to be releasing a noise song if fourth generation is actually noise and every single group to debut in the fourth generation would be releasing a noise song it's completely dumb and also another thing that annoyed me the most was when this k-pop short channel made rare concepts in k-pop and added the cute concept in it which shows the lack of you know research this k-pop short channel state if you're doing a short or a long form video on certain topics like rare concepts in k-pop or something like that where you actually need to do some proper research to actually you know know if you're getting your information correctly why did this ktube why did this k-pop short channel who's a popular one by the way not do any research on this topic like literally they added cute concepts in the rare concepts of k-pop which is completely dumb because there's a lot of underrated unpopular and nuku girl groups and stuff releasing cute concepted songs in k-pop even with boy groups also four generation there's quite a bit of cute concepted songs but if you look at girl groups there is um, Ailey One and CSR for Innocent Cute Concepts, there's Girls World with Rapunzel featuring ICU's J.E. and Nae for Cute Concepts, that is, you know, Innocent, there's Makamaka's Burning Power, Makamaka's Hey You, Pretty G's Let Me Out and Ola, there is um, Tori Tori do, Tori Manitos, Tori Tori Dotori, there is Cookies Music and there's some kid girl groups who have released cute songs that have debuted. Then there is Q6's Hello Summer, there is Pretty's Dear You, and there is Lemonade's um, Chewing Chewing, and the debut song Play, there is Perfume's Diary, and there's a couple of more girl group songs that are cute that I can name in the fourth generation, but it's not coming at the top of my head. So it's so annoying to see that this KTuber didn't do any research. Like, why do these, uh, I mean, this K-pop short channels didn't do any research. So I don't know why these 
K-pop shorts and K-tubers, they complain or they spread misinformation on the YouTube channels and they say these things constantly without actually checking if it's true or not. Like K-pop stands, I've noticed they say one thing and then it gets spread across different channels and these K-pop shorts and K-tube channels say the same thing over and over again with not one K-tuber actually checking if it's true. If boy groups release dark and noise music, then five to six channels will start saying the same thing and they will believe it only because they're looking at five to six boy groups and that also mostly title tracks and not checking out them properly. K-pop stands don't check out groups properly, don't, you know, dig deep in K-pop properly and stuff and then they make these assumptions and then it spreads all across K-tube and all across K-pop shorts and to different K-pop stands only because the other K-pop stands also think the same because they also as K-pop stands never did any research on K-pop and never actually checked you know different groups on K-pop and actually diversified their findings in K-pop and searched for new music to actually check if they was true. They would rather just share an opinion that is you know said by other people that they want to believe is true rather than actually checking if it's actually true or not. They would rather share the misinformed opinion in its original form rather than you know tweaking it by checking if the opinion is true or not. That's what annoys me about K-pop stands who are K-tubers and K-pop short channels. They will take the opinion, share it in its original form rather than checking if it's true and then changing the opinion up a bit so that K-pop stands know that this opinion is not true. No, they will just share the opinion in its original form and it's so annoying because that leads to spreading so much of misinformation and so many groups get thrown under the rug only because K-pop stands never do any research and check to see if whatever they're saying is actually true. Okay, so the last thing that I don't understand about K-pop stands is them, you know, making these counter, them making these unpopular K-pop opinions videos and shorts. This is for K-tubers and K-pop shorts. And then they make these defending opinions on idols and stuff. Like, you know, they defend an idol logo. Like, for example, Leah isn't a bad dancer or like, you know, Yuna and Von Young are not pygmies. It makes me wonder, when they make these opinions defending idols, do they actually mean it? Or do they just say it because, you know, they feel obligated to say it, that they have to say it and stuff. Because a lot of these opinions that you know are defending idols they are popular opinions that are set across 10 plus channels so all these 10 plus channels who have constantly talked about yuna and Won Young not being pygmies do they actually mean it when they have said that you know yuna and Won Young are not pygmies or are they just saying it because it's a popular opinion because you know they can just easily share it on their channel and because um they can just you know use the opinion and get views or do they feel obligated to say it because, you know, they have to say it. Otherwise, they feel like a bad person if they don't. Because there's a difference between saying and uh, there's a difference between defending an idol, defending someone, defending a group when you genuinely mean it versus when you feel obligated to say it just because, you know, you have to. Otherwise, you'll be a bad person if you don't. Like when you, like, you know, if there's like a post on, like, you know, someone wants their story to be shared because you know something bad happened to them if you share it to other people do you genuinely share it or do you just share it because you feel like if you don't share it you will feel like a bad person for not sharing it because you didn't do your part in spreading the message of that person so it's the same with these opinions do people actually mean it when they defend idols in these opinions videos or do they just share say it because they you know feel obligated to and they will feel like a bad person if they don't or do they just share it because it's a popular opinion and you know they can just make these quick and popular capable opinions and get views on it? I don't understand. Can't, can't, can't